So, a few weeks ago, one of my Tumblr friends sent me a picture and said, I was in Barnes & Noble, and I saw these books and I thought of you. First off, I love when people just see things and they're all like, aw, Procontation Points would love this. Second, I love it even more when people are like, OMG, this book is so awful. Now, granted, my friend didn't know if this book was awful or not, but Goodreads knows, and the top reviews for the first book in this series told me that this was something that should be featured on my blog in some way or another. After finishing up the plan, I went looking for something else to snark. I was considering a lot of different things. I kind of didn't want to do a series because doing the plan took long enough as it was, but the only books that I were finding that weren't series were romance, and if there was one thing that I 100% knew that I did not want to do, it was another romance. Don't get me wrong, I love romance. But if you watch my snark of the plan, you'll hear how I couldn't talk a bit about what was actually going on in the book on the YouTube platform simply because of YouTube itself, so I settled for the most recent thing that I had added to my Goodreads shelf. So without further ado, Stalking Jack the Ripper by... <sighs> I really need to stop picking books by people with names I have no clue how to pronounce by Carrie Maniscalco. Chapter 1. Preliminary Incision Dr. Jonathan Wadsworth's Laboratory, Highgate, August 30th, 1888. We open on a main character who is later named Audrey Rose. She's apparently some sort of doctor in training, doing work on a cadaver. Her instructor is her uncle, although he's apparently been uncertain if he should continue to teach her or not. Pros being that it would piss off his brother, Audrey Rose's father. Cons being that Audrey Rose is apparently quite bad at the work and keeps forgetting steps in the lessons almost as soon as she starts the practical. Audrey Rose comments that her father is some fancy lord and if she isn't home soon, her father might have all of Scotland Yard out looking for her. Audrey Rose continues her work and eventually pulls out the man's liver. Her uncle asks how the man died and Audrey says it looks like alcoholism. A young man crashes into the room and announces that an unknown something is ready. Uncle asks if Audrey Rose is able to close the cadaver on her own. Rather than to just answer a simple yes or no, Audrey gets angry over the entire thing because she's capable of doing what she calls a simple task. When she talks about embroidery and then how she's practiced on a pig, the strange man laughs over it. He leaves and Audrey hurries to ask her uncle about school. But uncle is apparently going to let Audrey Rose attend under two conditions. First being that she must dress as a boy. The second being that she must not utter a word. And with that, the first chapter comes to a close. I'm not quite sure where this is going. I read some reviews on Goodreads complaining that the book had the irritating trappings of being a historical piece, but with a female lead who thinks like a 21st century girl. And I can see the beginnings of that here but I think that it's a little too early to say for sure either way. Chapter 2. Blood Vengeance. Harrow School for Boys, London, August 31st, 1888. The next day, Audrey is in her uncle's medical slash crime school. Audrey is apparently the only one who cares about any of that and comments that most of the boys look ready to hurl. Most of them were the same shade of artichoke. Are we just naming random vegetables now? My eyes were the color of kale, and my complexion was that of cauliflower. The only other person who seems remotely interested in the lesson and who wants to answer the question is described in great detail. Aubrey seems to think that it could be the man who showed up at her uncle's basement the night before, but can't tell either way. Although, the only thing that I'm thinking of is that the way he's described, eagerly waving his hand in the air, and that he's been meticulously taking notes earlier, he sounds like a male Hermione Granger. Also, also, with how much detail he's been given, he's likely going to end up as a love interest, isn't he? <sighs> the uncle and the boy, named Thomas by the uncle, continue their discussion over what could have happened to the victim being discussed. Golden brown eyes were perfectly set into an angular face as if Leonardo da Vinci had painted himself. If only my lashes were as luxuriant. His chin was squared, giving him a look of steadfast determination. Even his nose was thin and regal, giving him an air of alertness to his every expression. If he weren't so infuriatingly aware of his own intelligence, he'd be quite attractive, I supposed. He's totally the love interest. 
Young adult authors only put that much effort into describing love interests. Thomas goes on to describe how the victim was murdered. He then forcefully gets the boy next to him to help reenact how the murder happened. Uncle is pleased with Thomas's understanding of how to read cut marks in victims, as well as to think of the bigger picture in regards to things like blood splatter. Uncle asks some more questions, to which Thomas eagerly and quickly answers, much to Uncle's continuing delight. Uncle continues on by stating some other things that he observed from the crime scene. He says that he thinks that the killer was after the poor girl's organs, but says that the police don't agree with him about that. A discussion breaks out about this. While the other boys are yapping, Audrey doodles on her notebook until Thomas comes over. He offers some bizarre comments about the things she's drawing, and of course Audrey can't help but sass him, because of course she does. A small smile played upon his lips, and my heart trotted in my chest like a carriage horse running through Trafalgar Square. Picking a page out of how to write really miserable metaphors like Cassandra Clare, are we? Thomas seems to know that Audrey isn't a boy, but asks for Audrey's name anyway. Despite the fact that Thomas had given Audrey an insanely painfully clear way out of exposing herself, Audrey instead gives her full name. Why do I get the feeling that this is going to be how the rest of the book will unfold? The character being an idiot and getting into dumb situations because of said idiocy. Anyway, Audrey asks if she hadn't met Thomas the night before, but either he really wasn't the same guy or he's just unobservant. He says that he's apprenticing with Uncle and wants, and wants to ask Audrey later why she's attending the school as a boy. The friendly warmth I'd been feeling towards him froze over like a pond during a particularly frigid winter. <sighs> While my running motto for the plan seems to have been, not even German has a nine big enough, I feel like my motto for stalking Jack the Ripper is going to be along the lines of me sighing with frustration over dumb metaphors like this. Thomas then goes on to say in regards to Audrey attending the school as a boy, I do love the satisfaction of solving a puzzle and proving myself right. Because sexism. Next question. Uncle then brings the class back to order and tells him to write up theories on to why that young girl was murdered for the next class as Audrey picks up her things. Couldn't help thinking Thomas might prove an equally vexing mystery to solve. <sighs> hey, author, what if I told you that not everything is some grand mystery? Sometimes a banana is just a banana. The chapter ends with a diagram drawing of a heart between the end of chapter 2 and the start of chapter 3. I looked the entire thing up on Google, and the guy who made it was apparently a real person, and the drawing is not something that the author made herself. Okay, so, we're two chapters in. Things are starting to slowly pick up, but I'm still undecided about the story at this point. Is it going to get worse? Will it get better? Will it remain at the same kind of quality? I honestly don't know. Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. If you're enjoying this, please hit that subscribe button. I post a new snark video every Monday, but if you're eager for more snark, you can check out my review of the plan. If you've already seen that, then you can head over to Tumblr for my main book, Snarks. And if all of that is somehow still not enough for you, then you can become a patron supporter for just $1 a month and read a bunch of bonus Snarks that isn't up anywhere else. See you next week, guys!